So our compound interest formula is A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus R divided by N, all raised to the N T power. Let's define these variables. So first of all, the P out in front, that P represents our principal. The principal is the initial investment, the initial amount invested. Now R is our interest rate, however, it's always going to be the interest rate written as a decimal. Now take a look at the formula and notice again that we take the interest rate R and we divide that by N. So on my previous example, we had an interest rate of 6%, but the bank was giving us that interest quarterly, which was four times a year, and that's why we took our 6% divided by four. So that tells us that the N in this equation, that's the number of compoundings in one year. So N is the number of compoundings per year. Then we have T. Yes, T is time, but really it's measured in years. We can say T is the number of years that we're having our investment grow. And then A, you can think of it as your after amount or it's your accumulated value. This is how much your investment is going to grow to after so much time, after time t. So this is your compound interest formula. And again, from, from the exercise earlier where we took the example and actually worked out how much we had every quarter, you know that the 1 essentially is representing the 100%. And then we have the amount of growth, which is the interest rate divided by the number of compoundings per year. Now, what would be better than quarterly? Well, we'd make more money if our bank compounded monthly, and we'd make even more money if our bank compounded daily, or by the hour, or by the minute, or by the second. So if we could compound continuously or, or constantly, then we would have another formula. So my second formula is for continuously compound interest. The key word is continuous. When you see the word continuous, then you know we're using a different formula. And this formula is A is equal to P E raised to the R T power. I sometimes refer to it as the PERT formula. But the variables in this equation are the same as the variables in our compound interest formula. So P is still principal, R is still our interest rate, A is still the after amount or the accumulated value the amount that the investment has grown to. But in this formula, you're using the number E for the base, E being approximately 2.7. So if a given problem tells you how many times a year your interest is compounded, then you'll be using your compound interest formula. But if the problem says that the interest is compounded continuously, that's the signal that tells you you should use your, your PERT formula. A equals P times e raised to the rt power.